Welcome to Northwest Florida State College Outlook. NWF is committed to providing students with opportunity to meet their educational goals and to helping them achieve success. Our mission is our students, helping each person who comes through our doors to achieve their individual goals for education and career attainment. Joining me today on our program is Julie Cotton, the director of our hospitality management and culinary arts program right here at Northwest Florida State College. Welcome to this program. Thank you, thank you for having me. You know, we're really excited about this program and the interest that we're getting from the industry, our local industry. You consider we have 885 members of the Florida Restaurant and Lodging Association right here along the Emerald Coast. I, I would say this program is, is gonna be, it's not only magic, but it, it is, integral to continuing the good work that we do in tourism uh, in this area that is such a staple in building our economy. So I'm really honored that you, you've come uh, to be with us today. Uh, one of the things I'd like to talk about is a little bit about the onboarding process of the program. So we did this assessment, we listened to industry, and, and we've now decided to come full force with this program. And this past fall, we stood up the hospitality program, and this coming fall, culinary arts is standing up. Could, could you just give us a little bit of information about hospitality and the, that tourism program and how we're doing uh, with that program and a little bit about our students? Sure, yeah. and, and to you know reiterate what you said, industry. Industry yeah. is key to these programs. Absolutely. Um, and you know, they raised their hand, they came to us, uh, we listened and said, please, we, we need qualified, trained workforce employees. Right. And uh, certainly we responded to that call and we developed our curriculums based on what industry told us that the employee or employees would need to be successful um, in careers. And so we, like you said, we started hospitality last August and um, I'm pleased to say that we've got 36 students My enrolled goodness. in that program right now. Wow. Um, and I know wow. industry, once they hear that, they're going to be calling me, yeah. I need an intern, I need That's an right. intern. They're not ready for internships just yet, uh, but they will be. And then um, culinary arts, we will be we'll beginning this August. So enrollment is very active right now. We have 12 students enrolled in that program um, as of today so we're very pleased with those numbers Excellent. Excellent. and uh, pleased then to get those people out mm -hmm. into the workforce. Well we, we've talked about partnerships with industry and business but there is also another very vital partnership that we have developed in the area and, and it is with Florida State University Panama City and I'm really excited about that partnership and I as a result of this program, I certainly want to give a shout out to Randy Hanna, who is the dean there, a former chancellor of the state college system, and clearly understands uh, what we are and what those pathways need to be and how they, as a university, need to facilitate that. We don't always see that with uh, the, uh, the universities, the four-year institutions that, uh, that we work with, but Florida State understands it. I'd like for you to talk about that partnership the advantages of that partnership to students and how we've designed that to be seamless. And certainly uh, Jason Lafferty is my counterpart oh, yeah. over there and Jason is actually, as he says, a recovering <laughs> chef. So <laughs> yeah. he, he's a good resource too when we've been standing up our culinary program to call. Um, but they, you know, Jason and I have worked hand in hand. Certainly, as I talked about, the AA is a direct transfer to um, a four-year institution and to them. But our AS, Jason and I have looked at our curriculum and picked it apart and, and been able to, you know, do an articulation on which of our classes will apply to them. Um, Jason has advised me on advising students who want to go to FSU Panama City on what classes they need to take, um, electives Excellent. and then in the curriculum. And so we've worked hand in hand on that. Um, they have some scholarship opportunities while I know that um, our tuition for the uh, junior for the freshman and senior level is is a little bit cheaper than, than theirs so they know that and they have reached out to us and said we will provide scholarships um, when available That's to great. our students to be able to continue to a four-year degree and and so 
make no mistake that we fully intend through our two-year program to um, put people into the workforce in, in very high-level positions, but some of them have, will have a desire for that baccalaureate degree that moves them even further up uh, in, in the process. Uh, but our goal here is to satisfy the needs, the workforce needs of, of local, uh, of our local industry. There's no question about it, and, and I will in this program make this declaration that the Emerald Coast is a wonderful place. I've always heard that when you buy real estate, it's location, location, location. It's the same thing, in my opinion, with going to school. Uh, and um, it's, it's almost like buying an automobile. I'll be honest with you, it, I've always said that even in my early recruiting days, that when a student comes on campus, they have to feel as though this institution is a fit. It's just like buying a car. You sit in that seat, you feel really good, or you don't. Uh, and so coming to the Emerald Coast to take coursework can be invaluable, invaluable for us. So not only are we looking just to serve those immediately here, but we're also going to do some regional promotion for individuals that would like to get training here and then move here and stay here. And the opportunity for internships here is key. And, you know, hopefully those internships work into right. jobs. Um, and so that, or if you're already in industry, that works into a promotion for you. Exactly. I mean, that, that's the key. That is. And so yes. certainly, you know, you could live here, you could live at home, so it's not as expensive right. to where if you have to move to another location right. uh, and set up shop. So an internship here is, is very critical. Um, and that. that is one reason we are very seriously looking here at uh, bringing a really nice residence life on this campus so that individuals can come from wherever, live here with affordable housing, and be trained, and then immerse them in the workforce. That is my goal uh, as the president, to create uh, a loop for them that makes it affordable, uh, safe, uh, and, and a good place to, to work, as we say in our commercials, to live, to work, and play. And that, that is a, a critical piece for me. So, you know, this is what I, I would, there are two things I want to say, and, and num number one is that if students are interested in, I want, this, I want prospective students that might be watching this program and they might be saying, boy, I'd really like to get involved in that. I've always wanted to do that. Um, w the first thing would be, Julie, to tell folks that are interested, students, mm -hmm. how they can get more information about the program, and then I want to segue into the industry and the donor piece of okay. this as well. So talk about the student. Sure, um, how, how do folks that are watching right now uh, you know, engage? Engage, certainly our website uh, is up to date with all of our information. Uh, easy, nwfsc.edu and click the search button or go to academics and then you can find the hospitality and culinary arts degree flyers mm -hmm. underneath there and they list out, it's very easy to read. List out, it lists out the 12, I mean the 20 classes that you need to take and then our admissions button, uh, click admissions, fill out our application, and then that puts you into our system. And then if, you, if you've got some questions and want to talk um, via phone, sure. uh, certainly you can call our, what, our uh, main number, 678-5111, and they will connect you to our office in hospitality and, uh, and culinary arts or with uh, one of our navigators that can walk them through as well. So we certainly encourage anybody that's watching that wants to, you know, you have a lot of incumbent workers that want to upskill mm -hmm. and upscale, and this is a real opportunity to do that. So now we move to business and industry. We cannot make it without the partners, and you mentioned them, Ken Wampler, uh, Bruce Crowell, so many of those individuals that, uh, Keith Howard, I mean, just mm -hmm. many of them that Dale are involved. Peterson. Dale Peterson, our great friend. Uh, so. Talk a little bit about how individuals that might be watching this program today could get engaged, could get engaged, and I'm talking about business and industry that might want to help with a scholarship or just uh, general support of the program. Um, how do they go about doing that? Who do they talk to? And uh, I know it was exciting just last week or week before when we went to Newman Daily and that took that big daily. check that said $15,000 and, and they were so happy to do that because of the need. How can others do that? 
Well, and, and I would like to recognize Dale Peterson. Dale did the same thing, the stepped first, up to the plate, and he was twenty five thousand, and he was one our first donor. Yeah. Uh, following him um, was Mr. Lipke, and so um, yeah. he was another twenty five thousand for culinary arts, I believe. Uh, Hundred thousand, actually. Oh, that's yes, right. yes, yes, yes. Scholarships. Scholarships. He gave another twenty five for another project. for another scholarship. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, his was program specific. Yes, it was. Uh, Mr. Peterson's was scholarship specific, and and certainly that's a that's something that we need to address. Where you can earmark your money for scholarships right. or for program support, and certainly we need it in program support, mm -hmm. but certainly we need it, uh, you know for scholarships for students. They're both very critical. You can contact our foundation office, um, our Vice President of Advancement, Christy Kudrowski. You can also contact me. Um, and that I'm, number I am, is on the screen right now. It should be. Yep, 863-6502 is my number. Um, I'm at the Fort Walton Beach campus. I wear two hats on the Fort right. Walton Beach campus uh, director as well, so you're welcome to stop by too and, and speak to me on how to, to get involved. Um, I'm very active in the Destin Chamber, yes, so I'm going to add a lot of Destin Chamber Don't functions you have an officer's too. Role in that? <laughs> I do. Incoming president, <laughs> yeah. um, following uh, our good friend Bob Perry. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, so, you know, honestly, call me, email me, um, and certainly our foundation office can help in that role as well. You've got my strong support. Support. You know, the institution is, is advancing very rapidly. We're progressing very well, and, and it's neat to see new programs step in that are going to really help people and help our local economy. That's exactly what we want to do is remain relevant uh, and to be the best. Our standard is the best, and, and that's where we're headed at Northwest Florida State College. So thank you, Julie. It's thank been a great you. segment. Uh, you're doing a great job and keep up the good work. Okay, we will. Thank you for watching today. The next segment of our program, we're moving. We're moving to the welding department and we're going to talk to Scotty Smith about the outstanding work that he's doing in fulfilling the workforce in the welding industry across this region and across the nation. Stay tuned. Hello, I'm Devin Stevenson, president of Northwest Florida State College and we're here for the second segment of our program today and we're glad to be in the machining lab and I tell everybody Scotty no matter where I go and most of the time you're not even in the room that you're the best of the best best welding instructor I've ever worked with and this is the best welding program that I've had the honor and privilege uh, to work with so we're thrilled to have you on the program today thank you now I, I will say that out of the the various welding programs with which I've been associated uh, you have a completely different philosophy of teaching and learning and of course, that's what we do at a state college. We're really not that much as about research as we are teaching and learning and helping students move to that next level. Talk a little bit about that philosophy of teaching that you have and how you employ it uh, into your classroom and into this phenomenal welding lab that you have here. You're correct. My teaching philosophy is a little bit different. It's about what I can guarantee and not guarantee. I never guarantee my student a job. I never guarantee they'll make a certain amount of money, but I guarantee my student I will do everything I can to teach them everything I know about welding. And I do that through uh, meeting with other teachers and meeting with other welding programs, see what they do so what I can improve on, so I can look at my own program and increase it and enhance it to where they have the soft skills sure. and the weld training to be the best students, best trained possible. And, you know, we, we continue to hear about those success stories. Let, let me digress just a minute. I, since I've been here, we've made uh, one significant addition to your welding shop. Now, I think since you've been here, we've, we've had two of those additions at least. Can you talk about what um, was the motivating factor to, to increase the space and, and how those play into uh, the success of your program? One of the, the reasons we increased the space was demand for the program. Um, we started with 15 welding booths with the Department of Labor grant, and at one point in time we had a waiting list. So uh, the college and the administration said, you know, we need to have these classes offered to many people as possible. So we went from 15 welding booths to 30 welding booths, doubled in size. And in that, we also had a uh, simulation, job simulation area um, built, and that's what we call the welder's playground. And mm -hmm. it, we, in that, we teach all the safety rules and OSHA, what it's going to be like on the job site. We get the students out of the welding booth and have them in real life situations, and that's what makes them better trained and better ready for the job in the construction industry because we actually put them in those situations. So you've got a, a real life kind of uh, environment here, and, and we hear a lot about this, that, that your approach is, uh, is most different 
in that you really create or treat the, the welding program like a job. Can you talk about that just a minute? I know we're moving off the script, but I, I think folks need to hear about that because what you do and what you teach them are the things that we hear industry say to us. Uh, students need the soft skills. They, they, they come to us, they're competent in welding, but they don't understand that you got to work together with somebody and you got to be on time and you got to meet deadlines. So talk a little bit about how you do that in your program. Uh, yeah, the soft skills are very important when I hear the same thing from my advisory committee. Uh, one of the things we do is attendance. We have a very strong attendance policy so that if someone does not show up for class, they will eventually fail themselves out of the class. Also, we do teamwork because anytime we have a project, it's always at least two people together, mm -hmm. working together, communication, and how to work with other people. We do leadership skills because we have a lead student for the week. We call them the straw boss, oh, wow. and they're in charge of any projects I have. So if I have something going, I will then give it to the straw boss, and I'll supervise them as they work in the team and get the project done. Uh, Deadline-wise, we have a certain time limit uh, before between each well test. So at every Friday, you have a well test. So you have to learn time management skills, staying on core, uh, staying on your project, staying in, staying on task, so that you can uh, get the project done on time, so you'll be ready for the well test. And so those are some of the things we use to help enhance the soft skills and teach some of those so when they go on the job, they'll have the welding skill and the soft skill and be ready for the, the job situation. That's magic. So give us just an example, one or two, of a successful student that maybe you've had and talk a little bit about uh, their monetary gains or where they came from uh, and, and how you launched them into a great career. Uh, one of the ones I like talking about is a Matthew Stewart. He, uh, came to us, he's a graduate of 2017, December 2017 when he finished up. He had spent most of his life uh, doing, working in food service industry and being a server at some of the high-end places. Um, he came in as, in his late 20s, so he didn't see a lot of advancement in his career. He wanted to do something different. His father's actually a, an instructor in the firefighter program, so he mm -hmm. told him about the welding program. He came over, looked at it, excited about it. He completed, got a job with Yates Construction as a pipe welder in construction jobs. He now makes $32 an hour, and they pay him $100 a day for living expenses. And he told me this month he's work if they sign, sign, <laughs> sign me sign me up. <laughs> well, he told me this month if they work the schedule they're planning to work, he's going to net $14,000 for the month. Wow. So yeah, I'm like, yeah, you need to help her. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that is for sure. And I, I know there's one other student. Um, We'll just say his name's Daniel. Daniel. Daniel came out of the retail, yes. uh, and in the first, if I'm if I'm right now, the first nine weeks, he's made more than he made all last year. Yes, sir. He paid off all his student loans, mm -hmm. and he and his wife have put like thirteen thousand oh. dollars back in savings. Yes, sir. Now that is success, and that's what we do at state colleges and at community colleges across the nation. We take individuals where they are, and we propel them into a very bright successful future. That's our work. Yes, sir. And that is the joy of our work. That's, that's really why I've stayed in this work and, and not moved out into private business or gone into some leadership role in a system uh, because I like students and I like to be around students and I like to observe their successes and I like to be a part of making them successful. And that's exactly what you do, Scotty Smith. And that's one of the reasons that you were recently named uh, our representative for the Dale Parnell Distinguished Faculty uh, Award recognized at the American Association of Community Colleges Conference in Dallas, Texas. And I'd like for you to tell our audience what that award means to you. Well, to me it was a great honor. It was a great honor. It was humbling as well because there's so many great faculty here at Northwest Florida State College and for me to be submitted for that award was very a great honor. Um, and then to go to that convention and to be among those other faculty and see how they are doing things and, and be part of that group, it was a tremendous honor for me personally. Now, thank you. Well, you represent us well. You represent the welding industry well, and we're, we're grateful and thankful for you. So, if there are people watching today, students that might be interested in your program, where do they get information? Who do they call? How, how do they get in line to be a part of the Scotty Smith Welding uh, Institute over here? Um, well, they can call me. Um, office phone number is 850-729-5224. And so they can also look on the website. There's information on the website. Um, if they're, they get to where they're interested, they want to be a part of it. Application is a general college application. They just have to put welding as a program of study. Mm -hmm. Once that's done, I get notified. I send them a packet of information to Good. follow up with them and make sure them the steps necessary to complete the application. When is the next class start for, for welding? Is it the fall term? This coming fall. 
So that's uh, the middle of August, around yes, the 15th or 20th of the August. 20th of 20th August. Of August. Yep. That's when the next start time is. So get ready. You need to call Scotty Smith or they can email you yes. if they want to know more. And what's your email address? Uh, Smith S60 at Northwest. Smith S60. I know there's a story. There's a story behind everybody's email address. But just remember Smith S60 at nwfsc.edu. Yes, sir. That's it. So uh, one other thing. Mm -hmm. There are many business and industries in this area. We know that aerospace is huge. We're watching an advance, um, an expansion of advanced manufacturing, and we're working hard to be a part of uh, improving the quality of place here for economic workforce um, and uh, community development. So we're expecting to see more and more businesses engage in this community as, as we make it easier for them to move and as our institution becomes a, a more, uh, a primary trainer. So if there's a business or industry exec that's out there right now watching this program, uh, tell me how they get in touch with, uh, with you about potential customized training for welding or specialized programs or even to send uh, potential employees to them. Is it the same the same way? Uh, but generally the same way. Contact me. Um, I'll see what their needs are and if it needs specialized training we'll get with Jeremy Goss in professional development and we'll set up the training course and the time so we can get trained what they right. need to do. Um, email me and so but yes just contact me and we go that'd be the first step and we'll go from there and see what they need. So, we Good. so they can call our main number yes, here at the college and it'll be on the screen right now so that you can see it along with Scotty's email address so uh, folks can see it right now as we're talking. <laughs> Your email address and the phone, you're going to become very popular Scotty. You know that. Uh, but we're really glad to have you today. Appreciate the great work you're doing. You're part of what makes us great. Right, and as you know, our slogan is the best is our standard. And we are moving this institution to become the best. We're already a part of the top 50 community colleges in the, in the nation according to the Aspen Institute, which is the platinum standard. And we're looking to move uh, a lot further into that, into that competition as, as we move through the next few weeks. Let me thank you for tuning in today. It's been a privilege to have you uh, a part of Northwest Florida State College Outlook. Uh, we've enjoyed Julie Cotton, our director of the Fort Walton Beach Campus and the director of our culinary and hospitality and tourism program, as well as Scotty Smith, the director of our really fine welding program here. And we look forward to seeing you next time. Until then, have a great day. Thank you for watching Northwest Florida State College Outlook. Our mission is our students, helping each person who comes through our doors to achieve their individual goals for educational and career attainment. Improve your life today at Northwest Florida State College.